Oh, hey everybody, John Stevenson here, I-5 Crash Course Series. In this episode, we're going to talk about... <laughs> that must be the Space Force. Growing pains, man, they hurt. I'm coming, I'm on my way. Upon entering into the Space Force, you will go through a patching ceremony where you are gifted patches and personal notes from a guardian who wore that patch, really showing the Space Force's embodiment of its core values. And if you didn't know the core values already, they're character, connection, commitment, and courage. And between you and me, you gotta have a whole lot of courage to raise somebody like the Space Force. <coughs> The Space Force is still growing and building its culture, but arguably its culture began back in the 1950s with the Space Race, which has now evolved much more into a complex, great power competition, which the Space Domain is involved in, as well as all domains. The Space Force Chief of Space Operations, General Chance Saltzman, as well as many other key leaders in the Department of the Air Force, including Secretary Frank Kendall III, had announced a re-optimization plan to re-optimize the Air and Space Force with 24 key decisions as announced at the Air and Space Forces Association Conference back in February of 2024. The goal of this re-optimization is to structurally change the Air and Space Force as well as include a new field command, the Space Futures Command, which we will talk about in a future episode in order to meet the demands of the Great Power Competition. Now there are four pillars in the effort to re-optimize the Department of the Air Force. The first one is develop people, then generate readiness, project power, and develop capabilities. And this episode is going to focus on developing people. Oh my gosh, I just, I, I just changed your diaper. Yeah, Space Force is like what? Four years old now, turning five this year. Still wears diapers, it's, it's a late bloomer. But we're getting there. I'm, I'm just kidding, it's a joke. It's a joke, Space Force. We're... General Saltzman has explained that the goal is to create joint-minded warfighters that understand the battlefield context of the space domain and who are fully equipped to act within it. What this means is that the Space Force will redesign career paths to make Guardians that are high speed, low drag through the new officer training course. Now we could probably create an entire Crash Course series just talking about the officer training course, but I don't think anyone has actually gone through it yet. So we're not going to talk much about it. <laughs> Additionally, General Saltzman explained that although not explicitly stated in the DAF initiative in their 24 reoptimization strategies, Guardians will be focusing a lot on the collaboration with commercial industries and our allies. An example of this would be to fix how the Space Force classifies information so where our allies and other trusted partners can have access to it for all of us to work together and win this great power competition. All right, enough on all that crazy big top leader stuff. We need to talk more about the day-to-day -day stuff. How are we shaping the Space Force culture today. Marines eat crayons, Army is dumb, the Air Force is lazy, and the Navy is, well, the Navy. So what is the Space Force? How is the Space Force going to grow up? Maybe a better question to ask is what makes a good Guardian, Soldier, Marine, Logistics Officer, Force Support Officer, Aviator, OSI Agent, Chaplain? Well, the answer is you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally you. All right, I'm done. I answered the question. Peace. But in all seriousness, what makes our force amazing and so lethal is our diversity. We all don't think, blink, talk, and walk the same, and that's a good thing. This allows us to build dignity and respect across the differing viewpoints we have in our nation in order to come up with the rational decisions that better all of us. Now, the Space Force is the smallest branch, and it's going to continue to be that way. 
And one of those reasons is because they're emphasizing the collaboration amongst all of the Titan individuals that make up the Space Force. It's pretty likely you're gonna be with people you might've met in your undergrad or at OTS during your next assignment. So don't burn any bridges too early because you may have to work with them in the future. Now there's plenty of ways the Space Force is building its culture from its colorful patches, blue name tapes, new service dress, and medieval heraldry. The question is, do we start resembling all the cool stuff we see on the internet or do we do something a little different? In my opinion, I just think we should embrace it, embrace the cool stuff, wear the Star Trek, Star Wars looking stuff. But I do understand why you'd wanna fray away from that Space Force, but hey, most of the people in the Space Force are probably nerds, right? But in all seriousness, that was an overgeneralization. The Space Force, I, I understand why you're fraying away from stuff like that. The medieval aesthetic on the patches seems like a good balance between the Space Force's futuristic mindset with the long tradition of military heraldry. Another thing I find unique about the Space Force is the Guardian Spirit Book, which is organized into four chapters dedicated to the Guardian core values of character, connection, commitment, and courage in their daily lives. If you take a look at it, there are tons of I will statements, which seem very focused on action, as well as way more personalized. So although there is a push for team effort across the military, these I will statements help direct the spirit of the individual guardian, each of which to an extent talk about teamwork, which ultimately helps emphasize the positive attributes of the Space Force as well as define the Space Force distinguished as a separate service. That last line was almost directly taken from the guardian spirit, by the way, so... The three critical roles of the Guardian are Principal Public Servant. What this means is that they are principled members of the profession of arms who possess character beyond question. Selflessness is the foundation of being a military service member in the United States and as a military service member you need to keep this in mind with everything you do. Always focus on the fact that you serve the people. The second critical role is being a space-minded warfighter. Going back to the mission statement, the U.S. Space Force protects the nation's interest in, from, and to space, defeating all enemies in the way. This is their commitment, and they are experts in further deepening their understanding of the space warfighting environment against an adversary that can think too. The last critical role is a bold and collaborative problem solver. Guardian's courage allows them to engage, analyze, and debate new ideas to challenge the status quo. When new problems are presented, the Guardian connection allows them to fail and succeed together. And this connection is highly emphasized. I mean, the Chief of Space Operations talked to Guardians all across the nation saying, hey, our current mission statement is pretty damn confusing and let's make it a lot more straightforward. He took input from his service members to create the new mission statement, Bazinga. And it just, in my opinion at least, makes a lot more sense. This new mission statement also emphasizes how the Space Force is a lot more direct and way less bulky than the other services in our US military. You know, something important to realize is maybe it's good that the Space Force doesn't have a set defined culture because maybe one of the advantages to that is it's gonna be more willing to accept change as the great power competition evolves, hopefully at a rate much faster than our gray haired services across the other departments and our Air Force. Now, to be clear, I think the other services are doing a pretty good job at embracing changes as the great power competition evolves, but it might be a good thing that the Space Force can be a specialized force that is more willing to accept these changes in a heartbeat. Okay, so what is the Space Force culture currently? The Guardian Spirit is focused on character above all, integrity, teamwork, and respect, as well as the ability to solve problems at a rate quicker than any other branch, challenging the current way of things to make way for the sleeker, more effective, better, and with that comes failure that should be embraced. As author John C. Maxwell once, twice, maybe three or four times until he got it actually right once said, fail early, fail often, but always fail forward. And that's the mindset of the Space Force, baby. I personally believe the space domain is one of the best examples of failing forward, and the only way to fail forward is to allow environments for people to challenge the today for a better tomorrow. I will support you in your endeavors regardless of outcome and will work to be better tomorrow than I am today is a great way to put what I just said previously and that can be found in the Guardian Spirit at the bottom of page 9. I think the most important thing to understand is that the Guardian commitment is a lifelong commitment and the Space Force will continue to shape its culture. 
But I think the most, most important thing to understand is that you, whether you're a potential or current guardian, need to embrace the guardian spirit because you are essential to help continually define and refine the Space Force culture for years to come. So I guess to answer your question on Space Force culture, no, it's not going to be like Star Wars or Star Trek, at least right now, but maybe in the future when we have space rangers going around in space, we could maybe lean more in that direction, hopefully. The Space Force is almost five years old, and we're looking to you to become an American warfighting tool, but also to incorporate you in the culture of the Space Force. And I think that's pretty cool. Oh man, that was a... Uh... Oh my god, hold on, I gotta show you something. Hold on, hold on. Look at this. He's sleeping. I got Ernie to fall asleep for once. He always likes to, he always likes to fall asleep to, uh, to the, this thing right here. It's pretty cool stuff. Once upon a time, there was a program created called the Azimuth Program, where cadets went on parabolic flights and learned cool space shit. It would have been really funny if somebody came through the doors right now and saw me doing that, that would have been awkward.